Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's well. Obviously, I'm Josh Gaddis, offense coordinator here at the University of Miami. Recording in progress. I apologize. Our morning workouts are going on, so my uh, my voice is a little a uh, little bit lost. Uh, but I'm so thrilled. Uh, the excitement, the energy right now that's surrounding our program, uh, the commitment of our of our players. Um, they're in an all buy-in approach right now. And we're excited. Coach Cristobal's uh, steadily, you know, creating the energy and setting the tone and building our staff out. Um, and it was a unique opportunity to come here to University of Miami uh, to be a part of such a storied program um, with so much history and tradition, uh, being back in the ACC conference, a conference I know so well uh, from my college experience. Uh, I'm just truly honored for this opportunity and excited to be in Miami. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question for Coach Gaddis, please use the hand raise function on Zoom. And Coach, we're going to start with Matt Shodell from Kane Sport. Matt, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Miami. Um, I guess it's a good sign you lost your voice, maybe. I don't know if it's a good or bad sign, but you certainly have lost your voice. So <laughs> I'm hoping you can spare a, a few words from me talking about sort of your vision for the offense, because I know, you know, you've had the Alabama offense, you had the Michigan offense when you first got there, and then last year you sort of changed the Michigan offense. So what do you sort of foresee? What's your vision for, for the Miami style of offense that you're going to run? Well, first off, hello to you, Matt, as well. And uh, uh, thank you for those remarks. And obviously my voice will be coming back soon. But uh, I'm excited just to be here in Miami. Uh, the opportunity I have with, the, with our players, and uh, let me say this, uh, before I accepted this position, you know, I did a ton of research just looking at our roster, watching film, um, really diving into the talent that we had here. And I've been so impressed by our players, uh, just the commitment and buy-in that they have um, has created some exciting moments here. But uh, we're going to build our offense around what our players do best. Um, you've seen kind of the offensive system that we have grow each and every year, as you've mentioned, uh, and we tailor that to what our players do best. Um, it's not one singular thing. We do everything. And so, um, you know, our offensive system has stayed the same for the past four years, but we we detail it out uh, to build to the strengths of the players. And so it's our job as coaches uh, to play to their strengths. And so we've got some key unique pieces that I'm really excited about really at every position. And so, um, you know, spring is, is going to come pretty soon in March. Uh, we'll start developing the identity, but most importantly, the thing that we will do is we'll take great pride in who we are and how we do things here at the University of Miami. And that's what we'll be about offensively, playing as a team and winning games. Coach, we'll go next to David Lake from 24-7 Sports. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Welcome. Uh, I want to ask you about, you said you, you studied the, the personnel a little bit, just obviously Tyler Van Dyke quarterback what what are some of the first impressions you saw of him maybe on the film you watched and then I'm assuming you you've already met him a little bit and talked with him too yes David uh, so I'm really excited just about our quarterback room all together from Tyler and Jake and Jacuri everyone just in that room and so uh, you know I'm just really excited to get to working with those guys um, you know, they're, they've been, you know, really, really uh, just pleasing to coach so far. You know, the energy, the leadership, they're stepping up first in lines out in uh, our fourth quarter program. You know, and that's what you want in your quarterback position. You want great leaders. Obviously, Tyler's got a ton of experience last year where you really saw him to kind of start coming into his own when game experience and game experience had some really good uh, opportunities to learn and grow on the field and had a ton of success. And so, you know, you hope that, you know, going into year two now of playing that you gather that confidence and you gather, um, you know, those game experiences. But, uh, you know, it's a clean slate for everyone. Um, you know, we're excited about what the opportunity we have here to build something special offensively, but it's going to take putting all the pieces together, uh, not just the quarterbacks, but the offensive line, the running backs, the receivers, the tight ends, all collectively coming together as one. Real quick, too, if I could follow up and ask just your, your transition of going from being a defensive player to an offensive coach. How did that happen? And I guess just how does that also help you as an offensive coach now? That's a great question. And uh, you know, my first opportunity that presented itself in coaching was on the was on the offensive side of the football. Uh, and I was fortunate to work for a tremendous offensive coordinator uh, who's been a mentor to me by the name of John Shoup. And uh, John Shoup challenged me, Coach Shoup challenged me. He said, hey, come over to offense. Uh, and it was at the University of North Carolina at the time. And he said, just learn it. Um, it'll be great for your defensive career. And little did I know I was going to dive all in and fall in love with offensive football. Uh, and early on in my career, uh, it really allowed me to just develop an appreciation to learn um, because I had to learn it each step of the way, each place I went to, um, because I didn't have that previous experience on the offensive side. But uh, what I did do as a defensive player is I always studied different offenses. I always studied route running, receivers, little intricate details 
details like that. So I was able to teach my players from the opposite side of things and allow them to understand what a defense is trying to do, whether that's based on coverages, blitzes, or pressures. And so um, I haven't looked back since. I'm fully converted. I'm an offensive guy, um, but with a deep background on the defensive side. But uh, that's a great question. Coach, we'll go next to Chris Stock from inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, uh, you talked a little bit about kind of adapting your offense. I'm curious what that process is like, because clearly at Michigan, you know, the transition you had, your receivers guy, then how well you guys ran the ball. Just can you explain what that process is like and then how much adjustment you have to do uh, to get the most out of an offense? Yeah, you know, I think it's really starting with the identification process of identifying the strengths and weaknesses of your pro of your players. Um, you know, that's what these morning workouts are all about for me. This next month is for me to understand what our guys do well. Um, and I'm not going to just base that on last year's film uh, because, you know, we were so young. There's so much young talent here. Um, you know, you look at how many young players played here offensively last year, and there was a ton. Um, and so we've got to continue to build those guys. We've got to get healthy. We've got to build the confidence of our players. Uh, and then we got to put all the pieces together. And so I'm excited. Um, we're building out a great staff offensively, a lot of different guys from all different backgrounds. But it's also going to be about that. It's going to be about our staff. You know, what does our staff like to do well? Uh, because if they embrace what we're doing, they're going to coach it to the fullest. And I truly believe, you know, we've got a great staff that we're building. I'm excited uh, to work with all of our staff members uh, and uh, just looking forward to what we built here offensively together. Coach, we'll go next to Heather Dinich from ESPN. Heather, go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thank you for doing this. Um, I know it was a whirlwind for you emotionally and, and everything for over the last week, but what, what can you share with us about what your last week was like at Michigan? Oh, good morning to you, Heather. Uh, this is one of the first few times I can say good morning without wearing a coat. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> get leave about it. I leave about it the hotel in the morning. I just leave my coat laying there. But uh, I'm excited just to be here at the University of Miami. Obviously, it was a very emotional um, week as far as leaving. Anytime you go through change, it's always hard uh, because I felt like I didn't leave players behind. I felt like I left friends behind. I'm a person that's built on relationships. Um, and, and, you know, coaches that have worked for me, they're always going to tell you it's about relationships. I left a tremendous amount of friends. Uh, my family is still back in Michigan right now. And so, um, you know, that's always hard going through change. Uh, but the thing that, that helps you get through change is surrounding yourself with great people and being here with Coach Cristobal and the staff that he's putting together, the energy, the excitement. Um, you know, I walk past Coach every day and I just say thank you. And he pops in, checks on me. And when you've got a guy like that leading your program and you believe in his vision, he sets the tone and energy and excitement with throughout the program. And so I've just been so blessed to be here. Um, each day has been, you know, eye opening to me. Um, but I'm still running on fumes. I mean, it, it, uh, it, uh, it, it's been, I've been exhausting everything I have into this program, and I won't stop until we get the job done. Coach, we'll go next to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. Hi, Coach Gaddis. Nice to meet you. And yeah, winters down here are a lot easier than I assume in uh, Ann Arbor. But um, my question is, you said, you know, you watched a lot of film, did a lot of research, you know, uh, preparing for this job and preparing, you know, for the interview. Um, what was was there anything on that that film that you saw that popped out at you that maybe surprised you that you wouldn't have known about Miami's offense, you know, when you were up at Michigan? Yeah, you know, I think when you just look at the the, the young talent that played, you know, you look at, uh, you know, I thought the offensive line did an extremely really good job. I thought the quarterbacks really came on throughout the year. Um, I, I thought the receivers were very young and talented. Um, they just needed game experience. And then the running back position um, was, uh, you know, was really exciting with a bunch of depth there and a bunch of players that have played. And then our tight end position potentially is one of the better, if not one of the, in the top five of those groups, you know, I think as far as excitement of talent uh, in the country. And so, you know, when you start adding all the pieces together, that really makes you excited as, as a coordinator because um, it's our job to put the kids in the best position to be successful. At the end of the day, it comes down not to the X's and O's, but to the people, to the players, to the coaches uh, that we come together. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not one to sit here and say I'm a guru. I'm a man of, uh, I'm a leader of players and, and we'll be as good as our players are. And, uh, you know, it, just getting them to embrace the culture, embrace the systems that we'll bring, uh, but be coachable. 
you know, and embrace each other and trust and believe in each other. And I truly believe um, we can develop a special group. We've got a ton of work to do. Um, obviously, they've had a ton of game experience. But when you look back even last year, look at the amount of games that were the map that came down to, you know, whether it was a touchdown or less or a field goal or less. And so it comes down to just the little things. And if we can put an emphasis on doing the little things right, those will create big results for us. Coach, we've got a few more hands up. We'll go first to Gabby Arutia from 24-7 Sports. Gabby, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Miami. Um, a couple of recruiting questions for you. Uh, obviously, a pretty loaded crop of receivers in the 2023 class. Just how excited are you about, you know, just, you know, that group of guys? And uh, just as a, another part of that, just how involved are you going to be in the evaluation of, like, the quarterbacks and, you know, that sort of, you know, recruiting process? Because I know you do have that wide receiver background. Yeah, one thing I'll say is, you know, your head coach really kind of sets uh, the tone and identity of how you recruit and who you recruit. And uh, there's no better guy in the evaluation process than Coach Cristobal. I mean, the energy that he brings in recruiting, um, his system uh, has been proven. The process has been proven, the evaluation process. And so, you know, we've got three hours, four hours carved out each day just for recruiting and that commitment alone. And so, um, you know, it's exciting for me because everybody in the country comes recruit South Florida because of the talent here because of the high school coaches in South Florida, the high school programs. It's some of the best programs and the best football all across the world. And so, you know, when you have it in your backyard, it's our job to make sure that we keep that homegrown talent here in Miami. And when you think about the history and tradition of this place and all the previous uh, players that have gone on and played in the NFL and been successful, won national championships, they did that with kids in the backyard. And so we will recruit nationally. Uh, the brand itself, the U itself, will allow us to get into any and every high school across the country. But most importantly, we've got to make sure we put a border up in our backyard. We've got to recruit kids within our state, keep our talent home, and we've got to build the U back. Coach, we'll go next to Brandon Adoy from Football Hotbed. Brandon, go ahead. Coach, welcome. Um, you talked about relationships. You're talking a lot about people. The South Florida athlete is different. And you know that you've been around, you've had some of them at previous stops. So the question is, like, what are your strategies going to be to endear yourselves to these guys and get the most out of them? Obviously, you have talent, but specifically at that receiver, that's going to receive a lot of focus, you know, based on, you know, what you guys are bringing back. And I don't think that's too much of a secret. So you've been there a few days or however long you've been there. What are your strategies to build these relationships, get them to where you want them to be? And then, as you say, take the talent from where it is, develop it and get the most out of it to be at the levels you're used to playing with. Yeah, that's going to start with our players first and foremost, Then it's going to trickle down in recruiting. But, uh, you know, you see our guys right now, you know, they're so thirsty right now for just knowledge. Um, you know, I've been able to spend two mornings with them right now. They want to be coached. They want to be developed. Uh, and that's what's exciting. Um, you know, you come in the door and sometimes in some story programs, you say, well, how are they going to embrace change? How are they going to embrace a new culture? And our players are all in. They want to be coached. They know how special this opportunity is for them here at the University of Miami, and they want to win. They want to win at all the highest levels, and we want that from our coaches' staffs. And, you know, one of the things that you look at each and every coach that has been assembled on our staff, we're great teachers, but most importantly, we're great developers. I take tremendous pride in developing wide receivers. I take tremendous pride in developing offenses and programs. And so we want to make sure that we develop that culture where our kids take tremendous pride in developing themselves and achieving all of their goals. And when we can do that currently with our players, that's going to trickle down in recruiting because your players will be your biggest advocates to the families around Miami, as well as developing relationships with the coaches, everyone that's involved with each and every student athlete that we may go recruit. We've got to know who's the decision maker because it takes a village. Okay. And this is not just a football program. We want to create a family. We want to create a family with our alumni, getting our former players involved, getting them back involved. It's going to take everyone collectively to bring the U back. Last two for you, Coach. We'll go first to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, Coach Gaddis. Um, wanted to ask you about um, your relationship with Mario. Uh, you know, I, I know obviously you guys both coached at Alabama, maybe at different times, but you, I'm sure you had a lot of suitors coming after you after winning that Broyles Award last year. 
Just curious what made him and this job attractive. You know, I, I've been able to, uh, it goes back to, I was telling Coach Cristobal, uh, my relationship with him even goes back to 20, uh, 2010 and 2011. Um, I was recruiting at Western Michigan University, and I was always coming down uh, to South Florida, battling him for kids while he was at FIU. And uh, he was leaving out of homes, doing home visits, and I was walking into homes uh, with Coach Cuban at the time. And so just a, just a ton uh, of respect for him and being able to see him throughout his career and the steps that he's taken the programs he's built and all the success um, that he's had. You know, he's led programs from the top down. And so uh, this was an exciting one. Um, I watched him go through this process of his decision making. Uh, Coach Cristobal did not have to leave the previous institution that he was at. Um, he had that place rolling at the highest level. Uh, but to see him make that commitment to come back to Miami, a place that's so special, a place that's home to him, that's what excites you. That's what excites you as a coach, because I believe in his vision. And most importantly, our administration, our fans, our community, they've gone all in collectively to give him what he needs to build this program. And that's what it's going to take. It can't be one singular coach or one singular side of the ball. It's got to be everyone within the program pulling the rope in the right direction. And uh, just to see his energy to feed, to feed off him and his knowledge, um, it's just a tremendous opportunity to learn from another great coach. Coach, last one for you is Susan Miller Degnan from the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Welcome. Um, your relationship with, with Frank Ponce, I know you have to work closely, obviously, with the quarterbacks the coach. Um, and a lot of times the offensive coordinator is a quarterbacks coach. Um, how do you mesh, you know, with, with him? What do you know about him, quarterback coach? And I also wanted to ask you if you played, I know you played like around 2004, were you a senior at Wake Forest? Oh, that would have been my junior sophomore year, 2004. Sophomore. Did you play against Miami or here at Miami? Tell me about that also, in addition to the quarterback question. Well, hello, Susan. I'll start with the last part of that question first. Um, I happened to play uh, Miami twice in college. Uh, once at Wake Forest and then once in the old Orange Bowl here. Uh, and uh, neither one of those experiences went well. Um, and so that's my appreciation for this program. Um, it's, I've been on the other side of, of the field going against this program. And when I played against Miami, I mean, you're talking about, you know, Brock Berlin. I mean, you're talking about uh, Kellen Winslow, um, Greg Olson, Kevin Everett, Willis McGahey, Frank Gore, Norris Moss, Brandon Merriweather, on and on and on from some names that you go, wow, all these guys uh, played here at the University of Miami. And so I have an understanding of appreciation of this program. Um, and those experiences did not go well. I'm glad to be here at Miami now. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see some of the former players come back. I'll probably try to hide those memories, uh, but I'm, I'm excited to lead the program moving forward 